Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Lifestand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at another amazing creation from the Steam Workshop. Now here in front of me is the A78 Voyager, or Super Shuttle. Now this is a modification of the Shuttle series, and this one is much, much larger, and it's been created by Zint Lead. And I have to say, his design is spectacular. This is definitely a small ship gone wild. There is curves, there is a beautifully designed nose cone. Just look at the shape of that cone on the front of there. It is so smooth and it just looks like perfection has been added to every detail of this ship. So we're going to have a look around it, we're going to test it, and then we're going to attempt to land it back on Earth. And we all know that shuttles are very difficult to land, so we'll see if we can do that. So first off, let's have a look around the exterior. Towards the front here, like I said before, we have this beautifully designed cockpit, and we've also got that small ship's sort of mega block pack so we can actually have some glass windows come on space engineers developers we need these small ship windows by now and you can see in there we've got the small cockpit but the interior is just a whole other level of detail so as we continue working our way down the side i think you can best see this if i come up from this angle here you can see how it slowly fans out well while still keeping that curved pattern that a lot of designers really struggle to do. So you can see the curves slowly fan out on either side, just using slight staggering over time to sort of create that detail in, and it just looks absolutely fantastic. Look how that curve then follows down into the wingtip. If you're a designer who likes designing wings, then these wings are definitely gonna excite you. So see at the actual tip here, we've got this folding component. So we've got less drag, less resistance. We can also use it to fold it up if we were going to put it inside a hangar. So you can see the wingtips there folded on that rotor. Not particularly space engineers friendly, but you know what I mean. So as we come into this area, we enter into the rear sort of thrust pack as well as the doors. So these doors are going to open up, allow you to fix small satellites or even deploy satellites if you wish to. And it is large enough if you just actually have a look at my character next to it, where you can definitely fit a satellite of quite some size in here. So if you're in interested in doing some sort of original sort of NASA missions, this shuttle would be very useful indeed. And you can see the logo there of NASA on the side done very nicely with some of them small ship mega pack blocks. Very nice indeed. So as we come around the back here, we have the rear thrust pack that just looks absolutely amazing. We've got a combination of both hydrogen thrust and atmospheric thrust. So we, well, we've basically just got enough power to take this guy off and take him around wherever we want to go. So you can see underneath it, we actually have the landing gears that are currently down in this configuration. So you can see, we can have a look a little bit onto the undercarriage where there's a little bit of mess going on in here. I'm not gonna lie, but still it functions very well. You can see the two double landing gears either side and the landing gear flap at there. And the bottom, yes, is rather flat. So not too much has been going on under here, but I'm sure detail like that can be added in the future. And who looks underneath a spaceship anyway? Right, let's head inside. So as we enter through this side door here, we are nicely greeted by this interior. So we'll close up the door behind us and we have a little bit of a document sort of area with a glass sort of table. Very nice indeed, the remote control block and it's some detailed storage on this side as well as some bunk beds. Very nice indeed. So before we go up to the bridge, I will go up to the bridge anyway. You can see we've got a diagram of the ship in the center. If I just hop into the chair, you can see we've also got our coordinates and some information on the ship, everything we need. Now, if I exit out, we also fall back into the corridor instead of being injected out into space. Something that a lot of designers forget to do. Of course, we have a space toilet, very important. And then we walk through these really detailed corridors. Just look at this, some great inspiration here. If you're going to design a corridor with small ship blocks, you can see how he's added this extra ribbon so it looks like support. And then behind here is put this small interior block so it looks like this piping and wiring going on behind these vents. So let's go up into this section. So you can see we have the control area. So you can see we've got a little bit of a diagram there and we can control the deployment of satellites and whatnot. So if we, for instance, hit number five, you can see we can deploy that system. But before we do that, we really need to deploy the actual system to open up all of the controls in the center there so we do need to be careful and we've also got this camera here so we can see what we're doing with that particular arm very nice indeed let's actually have a look out there before we deploy any of these systems so we're going to seal the airlock up behind us that's very important so we'll cycle the airlock section there light's going to flash give us some nice detailing suck all the air out of this particular section and now we're inside here a little bit of steam gas top effects looks really nice in here indeed 
and you can see we've actually got the arm for deploying our recovering satellites as well as various connector points so we can dock restock them with supplies and if I open here we actually have the opening of the hangar and that just looks absolutely spectacular so if you see from the outside here as well as this opens up just really nice to have a ship that has a function like this just looks so realistic so if we actually pop back down then we can deploy the actual crane from inside here we're gonna to have to cycle the airlock though of course so we're gonna go back inside go back to the crane seat let the airlock repressurize with the rest of the ship's interior and then we can control the crane from the seat itself so let's deploy the crane actually out so let's have a look at this see how smooth the deployment of this is and obviously we've got the camera on there as well so the piston is extracting up there we've got three pistons on this actual system so it's going to give us quite a bit of length and then we've also got the arm when it gets to the top yes and of course space engineers he's already taking over there we go it looks like it's managed to saw itself out so there we go we actually have control over this system now if we wish but it is very very janky because space engineers does not like pistons and rotors working together let's retract that down before something crazy happens i'm not liking the look of that so let that part retract itself back in <laughs> imagine recovering a satellite like that though it's like the guy who's controlling the actual satellite thing has a really shaky hand he's like right guys i'm in control <laughs> so now that the crane has been retracted we've actually got the doors open so let's seal the doors up we'll retract the hangar closed let's have a look at this once again really smooth really beautiful sort of retraction never trust pistons or rotors in space engineers though and that's sealed itself back up we've also got these buttons on the other side what are these guys responsible for they're the landing gears to uh, switch the locks on the payloads here okay so if we were carrying a satellite or something into space very interesting um, let's head back up to the cockpit so we're going to have to go back through the airlock we'll have to cycle it because Aaron opened it from the other side it's repressurizing it in there and then this side can open up there we go seal that section up revent into this section red light sparkling very nice indeed and there we are we're back into the main corridor now let's actually head up to the cockpit so let's have a check of our speed so we'll give it a little bit of acceleration and yes of course we need to probably retract our landing gears so let's press number one that's retracted the landing gears in we've got a nice little bit of burn and it can feel the landing gears pulling this craft down ever so slightly so let's just adjust our flight path ever so slightly indeed we've got access controls for the doors we've got access controls for the landing gears so we can put the landing gears back down we can also open the doors mid-flight if we wish to so all very risque things to do probably tear them off if we were entering back into earth with them and since there's no sort of atmospheric entry process the shape of your ship or the the texture of what your ship's actually made of is not going to be affecting our re-entry process so let's actually get a little bit further down and attempt to land this thing on an airfield so we're approaching the runway there we're being as careful as possible we don't really seem to be slowing down too much okay wheels are all down perfect let's attempt to get it down on the tarmac we've not got too much back facing thrust and we really don't want to hit that ground too hard oh god we've, we've misaligned completely come on wheels have come off and we are skidding to a stop you see the wheels rolling out behind us we we have technically landed though come on stop we're still scraping our way to the end of the runway okay so we've we've managed to land the shuttle the shuttle's always a difficult sort of ship to land so we managed to successfully do it even though we did lose the wheels but i don't think we got any more damage to the rest of the ship oh, we're not actually landed we're actually just hovering above it okay the wheels look like they tucked back inside so if we drop that out and drop the power out there we go. Now we've successfully landed the shuttle. I I'll tell you, that's quite a successful shuttle landing. Apart from I can't get out because I managed to turn the power off. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. It is a lovely little craft, this. It's a great example of a small ship gone wild. And it really has a lot of features that are really quite useful in survival. If you can get over the hell that pistons and rotors will cause to your game. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And I will see you next time.